there and welcome over here today. As you could tell, this kitchen is pretty different than my normal kitchen that I used to cook in in Utah. That is just because we moved into my parents' house over in New Mexico. If you don't know yet, we're living with my parents for a couple of weeks to a month until we find the perfect home in Utah. So that's why the kitchen's going to be different for a little while. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I kind of put together a bunch of different chicken recipes that I've made on my channel before that you might not have seen. So these are all of my favorite chicken recipes, maybe of all time. But anyways, I hope you all enjoy this video. And if you are new here, we'd love to have you over here. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video. But let's get to cooking. To get us started off, we're going to be making this Parmesan crusted chicken. So to begin, I have my one chicken breast right here and I'm just slicing it in half horizontally just like this. You could use more chicken if you have a larger family. And then I brought it over to a gallon size Ziploc bag and I'm just beating it with my meat tenderizer. And now over here to the separate bowl, I just cracked in one egg along with a tablespoon of water and this is going to be the egg wash. I just whisked it together. And then to add some flavor, I just added some onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of pepper and salt. To another separate bowl, you're going to be adding one cup of some grated Parmesan cheese. So now we're going to start coating the chicken. I'm just coating it in the egg wash on both sides and then moving it over to our Parmesan cheese and coating it in the Parmesan cheese on both sides. Of course, you want to make sure the Parmesan cheese really sticks to the chicken because it's going to add quite a bit of flavor. Over to my saucepan on medium high heat, I just added two tablespoons of butter along with two tablespoons of olive oil and I let that get nice and hot. And now I'm adding my chicken in there and I'm not gonna move the chicken. You're just gonna wanna leave the chicken and let it cook. Once you notice the edges of the chicken are starting to get brown, that's when you know to flip it. You don't wanna flip it too much though just because it is going to ruin the coating on the chicken. Here is my plate. I just served my chicken with some steamed peas and mashed potatoes. This is one of those meals that could easily go on a weekly meal plan. If you know me, you know how much I love pesto and this is such a great dish because you could really sneak a lot of veggies in there but to my saucepan I have a tablespoon of olive oil that I let get hot and then I added one pound of chicken breast that I sliced into smaller strips and one fourth cup of these sun-dried tomatoes and a little bit of some salt and pepper to taste and you're just going to cook this chicken up until it reaches the internal temperature of 165 degrees. Now that my chicken is completely cooked, I'm going to be removing it to the separate plate and I'm going to cover this plate with aluminum foil to keep warm. To this same saucepan, I added one pound of asparagus. I did trim the ends of the asparagus. I also added another fourth a cup of sun-dried tomatoes with a little bit of some salt, and I'm going to completely cook this asparagus up. I did end up adding a half a cup of water just to quicken the steaming process. While our asparagus is cooking, I'm going to start to cook up our two and a half cups of some tortellini in a large pot of some boiling water. Here is our asparagus. It is to the softness that I like it. I just added back in our already cooked up chicken and now I'm adding in our basil pesto. I started with a fourth a cup of this basil pesto. You could add up to a half a cup of this basil pesto. Kind of add however much pesto you guys like, but I thought a fourth a cup of this pesto was perfect for this recipe. But to our tortellini that I drained, I just added our veggie pesto mixture right in there. And all you're gonna do now is stir everything to combine. The very last thing I'm doing is adding one cup of half cherry tomatoes and you're going to stir everything together and now your dinner is completed. This is ready to serve. 
Here is my big bowl of food. I just served mine with some Parmesan cheese on top and a breadstick. Let me tell you, this is one of the best meals ever. I think it has so much great fresh flavor to it. I really think you should give this a try. Now we're making another pesto dish. This is a creamy pesto and chicken. This is one of those meals when I am absolutely starving. This just sounds so good to me. I don't know. To say this meal is amazing is an understatement, but to my saucepan with a tablespoon of olive oil that I heated up, I added one pound of chicken that I cut into smaller pieces. To that chicken, I added a little bit of salt and pepper and Italian seasoning just to my taste, and I cooked this completely through. Now that our chicken is all cooked up, I'm just removing it to this separate plate. I am going to cover this plate with some aluminum foil to keep that chicken warm. Anyways, to my same saucepan, I added two tablespoons of butter along with three tablespoons of flour, and I'm going to whisk this all together until it combines well for about a minute. And now right on top of that, I'm adding two to three cloves of garlic, and you're just going to stir that garlic around until it becomes fragrant. And then I added one cup cup of veggie broth and one cup of half and half. I brought this up to a slow boil to thicken. Once it started to get a little bit thick, I added in our one cup of mozzarella cheese and our half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Next, you're gonna be adding your basil pesto. This is just a half a cup of that. And then for our chicken that we just cooked up, you're going to be adding your chicken in right now. And you're going to mix all of this together to get everything well combined and well incorporated. And then your sauce is pretty much complete at this point. Here is my plate of food. I just sprinkled some Parmesan cheese on top just for some extra cheesiness, but this was so, so good. Like I said before, you need to try this dinner. I think you would absolutely love it. Now I'm showing you this double crunch honey garlic chicken breast recipe. And this recipe is beyond restaurant quality. I just think this recipe is so yummy, but to my Ziploc bag, I added three chicken breasts and I'm just pounding them with my meat mallet until they're about a half inch thickness. For our egg wash, all it is is two eggs beaten with about four tablespoons of water and that's really it. This egg wash couldn't be any easier. Now for our flour mixture, all it is is a cup and a half of flour that I'm sifting into this bowl. Now we're going to be adding our seasonings. You gotta bear with me for a moment. This is a lot of seasonings, but this recipe is amazing. It is worth every single seasoning. Anyways, I just added a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Next, you're gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of ginger and nutmeg, one teaspoon of thyme and sage. And then depending on if you want it spicy, if you do want it pretty spicy, go ahead and add one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I wanted to keep it more on the mild side, so I added a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne. If you don't want any spice at all, definitely skip the cayenne pepper. Anyways, you're also going to add one tablespoon of paprika, and then you're just going to whisk all of these ingredients together. I just set that to the side and now we're going to begin on our sauce. This sauce is so good, I could pretty much just drink it. It is really that good. But to my saucepan, I added two tablespoons of olive oil. I let that get hot and then I added our three to four cloves of minced garlic and I stirred that together till it became fragrant. Now I'm adding my one cup of honey followed by my fourth a cup of soy sauce. I used low sodium soy sauce. If you prefer coconut aminos, I'm sure coconut aminos will work just fine. Anyways, I brought this up to a simmer for about five to 10 minutes. I also added a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to begin to coat our chicken. Remember, this is double coated chicken, so I'm first dipping it into the flour mixture, then over to the egg wash, then back over to the flour mixture for a final coating. And I did that with all of our chicken breasts. And now over to my saucepan on the stove, I have about two and a half cups of canola oil in there. I let that oil get nice and hot. I did know it was hot when I put a little bit of flour in there and the flour began to sizzle. Anyways, I cooked this chicken for about three to five minutes on each side. You don't want to flip it too many times though. Flipping it just once is best for a fried chicken. Now that my chicken reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees or higher, I just removed it to this wire rack and now we're going to begin to assemble my plate. So I just put the chicken on a bed of some white rice that I cooked up and then I drizzled some of that delicious sauce that we made on the stove right on top. I did put some of the sauce on the rice too because it's just that good. Anyways, I just sprinkled some sesame seeds on top and served it with some steamed vegetables. This is such a good dinner. I just can't even get over this meal. I know I might sound crazy saying this, but this is just so, so good. It is worth the time to make this. Now we're making a chicken bacon ranch bake and this is definitely comfort food, it is so good. So to begin, I'm just boiling up four cups of some shell noodles. Once they are cooked, I drained them and set them to the side. Now we're just going to be cooking up our chicken. This is one chicken breast that I sliced thinly in half so it looks like two chicken breasts. Anyways, to my saucepan I have a tablespoon of some olive oil in there that I'm cooking the chicken in and all the seasonings I'm using is just some salt and pepper. I just cooked this for about three to five minutes on each side and now that it is completely cooked I'm just removing it to a separate plate and I'm going to set this aside. So now for our bacon I'm just using about four strips of bacon and I'm just going to cook this bacon up. Now that my bacon is cooked, again, I removed it to a separate plate. And to my bacon grease that is left in the saucepan, I added a little over a fourth a cup of some flour, and I'm going to whisk this together for about one to two minutes. Now I'm going to be slowly adding in our three and a half cups of milk. You wanna make sure you slowly add in your milk just to avoid any of those awkward, yucky clumps later on. So like I said, slowly add in your milk and whisk it while you are adding it in. And then once you added in all of the milk, you're going to bring it up to a low boil, kind of like a simmer, and let it get a little bit thicker. And now I'm adding in my three tablespoons of ranch dressing mix, followed by one cup of sharp cheddar cheese, and you're going to whisk all of this to combine. Now that everything is thoroughly whisked together, your sauce is pretty much complete. I'm just going to be chopping up our chicken into smaller pieces right now. You could chop it larger or smaller. I just chopped it to the best of my ability. To my shell noodles that I drained, I'm just adding our sliced up chicken along with our bacon that I'm crumbling in there. And then I'm just going to be adding our sauce that we just made up on the stove. And I'm going to stir all of this to combine. Here is my casserole dish that I sprayed with some nonstick spray. I'm just adding our casserole right in there and then I'm going to be sprinkling it with some more sharp cheddar cheese and bacon pieces. This is gonna go into a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 10 minutes or until your cheese is all melty.
Here it is out of the oven. This is definitely a family favorite chicken recipe. This is so, so good. Even my little daughter Brinley loves it when I make this recipe. It's just really good and it's kind of like comfort food, so it's a win-win. Now we're making this garlic chicken over white rice. This is another one that's just such a good recipe that I can make over and over again. So I have about three chicken breasts right here that I sliced horizontally in half. So it looks like quite a bit more chicken. You know I like to do my chicken like this just because it gives the chicken so much more flavor. Anyways, all I did was salt and pepper this chicken on each side and now I'm dipping it in some flour. This is about a cup of flour. I'm dipping the chicken in on each side. Over here to my saucepan, I added about a tablespoon of some butter along with a tablespoon of olive oil and I let that melt down. And now I'm just going to add our chicken in and cook this chicken on each side until it is completely cooked through. Now that we have our chicken all cooked up, I just removed one of the chicken pieces to a separate plate for my daughter Brinley because I knew she wouldn't enjoy the sauce. Anyways, I just added an additional tablespoon of butter to my saucepan and I'm adding in about four cloves of garlic. We're gonna begin on the yummy sauce now. So now I'm adding in a tablespoon and a half of some of this vinegar. You could also add in apple cider vinegar if that's what you prefer. I'm also adding in a tablespoon of soy sauce and a third a cup of honey. And you're gonna cook this on a low heat and simmer this all together until it begins to thicken. Here is my plate of food. I just served this on a bed of some white rice with some steamed veggies on the side. I feel like even if you don't enjoy chicken, you might like this recipe because the flavor of it is really super good. For this chicken recipe, it is a little bit different and unique. We're doing a zucchini chicken sausage. So this is actually chicken sausage. If you've never tried chicken sausage before, it really is good. So to start out, I just diced up one white onion into smaller pieces along with one zucchini and about one cup of cherry tomatoes. Now I'm going to begin to dice up my apple chicken sausage. I'm actually using this brand of apple chicken sausage. I found it at Costco. I really do like this apple chicken sausage for pasta dishes and things like that, but I'm just chopping it up into smaller pieces. This is about a pound. Over to my Dutch oven, I have about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. I added our onion along with our apple sausage, and I'm going to cook our sausage to brown. Now that our sausage is cooked, I'm just adding a little bit of salt to taste along with five cloves of garlic. Then I'm just going to stir this all together to make this garlic become fragrant. Now I'm just adding our four cups of broth. You could either use chicken broth or veggie broth, whatever you prefer. And then all of the bits on the bottom of your pan, you're going to be scraping them off right now. The bits have quite a bit of flavor in them. So then I brought that up to a boil and I'm going to be adding in our eight cups of uncooked pasta. And I'm going to cook this pasta completely through. It took me about 15 minutes. I had the lid on for part of it and then I took the lid off for the other part, but just make sure you check for doneness. And then I added in our zucchini and I'm just going to stir this all together and start to get this zucchini cooking. Now that our zucchini is completely cooked, I just added our cherry tomatoes along with our three tablespoons of fresh basil and a half of a lemon. Mm -hmm. 
To kind of give this a boost of flavor, I added about a fourth a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Then you're gonna stir this together. Once that cheese is melted down, you are ready to serve this up. And here is mine. I just sprinkled more Parmesan and basil on top. This was such a good, fresh tasting meal. It almost tasted light. It was really super good. And that is a wrap of this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I am going to be cooking in this kitchen soon. So keep an eye out for Wednesday's video and Friday's video and next Sunday's video because all of these videos are going to be filmed in this new kitchen. But anyways, I hope you guys had a wonderful week this week and we've had beautiful weather in New Mexico. I've been enjoying the sun. It's just been really nice. But as always, if you are new here, we'd love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video, but I will see you in Wednesday's video. Video. Bye for now.